we're going to be building these collage trail or collage clone effect. I saw this video of Toby Garrow made it, making it in After Effects. Toby mentioned a couple of things here that you want your video to be ideally not have any motion blur. And it's a lot easier if there's a specific camera motion. So if it's going sideways, it looks a lot better because then you can see the trails that stays behind, right? But in this case, I want to make it on this clip here that I found on Pexels. If you have a clip that's in slow motion, you can press Ctrl R and I want to slow it down a little bit more when it's in the air. I'm going to add a speed point. Okay, so we have that first speed point right here and I want to just slow down a little bit. So right here and we're going to add a second speed point. And then I'm going to just drag it down and slow it down to like 75 maybe. Then you can actually go and open the retime curve. And here you can add a little bit of more like an ease in and ease out to the little retiming that we did right here. What we can do is we're going to make a copy of these just to be safe and keep that other layer safe there in, just in case. We're going to go to the color page. And in this case, I'm going to use the magic mask. But if you don't have the magic mask and you are on the yourself free, you're going to have to rotoscope it manually. And I do have an older video of showing you how to rotoscope. So I'm going to link that up here if you want to do that. Or you can use a background remover AI basically that you can find online. I'm not sure if there's any free or open source options in that regard. But if there is and you know them, share them down in the comments so that other people that have DaVinci Resolve free can actually find it and use it. Okay, so here we're going to use the magic mask and for that, we're just going to click the magic mask section and we want to actually just track it from when it's in the air. We can start it right here, maybe. And we're just going to draw around it or around him. And then we're just going to track this forward. We can stop it right here because we don't want all the extra stuff. And if we want to see the result, we're going to go to the highlight section and then we can move it around. It's basically magic. Love that. Okay, great. Now we're going to add an alpha output right here and we're going to connect these to there. And now we have our first invisible layer basically of our friend here. Now we're going to export these as a PNG sequence. So we're going to right click and render in place. We're going to select PNG right here and then we can select 16 bits. That is going to open a folder and here we want to actually create a new folder. And here you can rename these image sequence. And we're going to go in and then save it right there. And now we're going to go to our media pool and that's going to create a whole lot of images here. Now we can create a new folder or a new bin right here on our media bin. And we're going to name these image sequence or whatever you want to call it. And we're going to drag all those images right there. Now that you have all the images here, we can go to this section right here to add a list and we're going to sort it by file name. After you sort them by name, make sure the lowest number here is the first one, obviously. And then we can just select all of them and we're going to bring these to our timeline. Now that looks pretty not good, right? But it's actually super easy to fix. We're going to select all of these and we're going to press T so that these trim tool or the trim edit mode is selected. Now we're going to press Ctrl D. And we're going to go and get rid of that five. And we're going to go to the last section and make these just one frame. And now we have another magical thing happening right here. Everything got shortened and it's right in place. It's exactly as if it was just a normal video. The only problem here sometimes is that if you have other things on your timeline, it will drag them out. So if you want to be completely safe, you can actually pre-comp all these and then do that there, which is actually the next step. We're actually going to pre-comp all of these. So we're going to right click and create a new compound clip and we're going to name these guy here. We're going to open these in our timeline and we're going to have to check it out from when we started tracking. OK, we have that there. There's our first guy jumping. So we're going to select this one and we're going to copy these and we're going to leave it there for a little bit. If you want to leave all of them, you will have to just put all of them like this. In this case, I want to leave a couple of frames in between each of the clones or the trails. So we're just going to go, let's say five or six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. After that, we're going to leave this up. Actually, we're going to copy that up. And I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to select that one, hold Alt, copy these. And then we're just going to do the same thing again. Here, I'm going to do five. So it's a little bit less time. Then we're going to do four. And then the last one. 
just gonna do three or four again after you have selected all of these we're gonna do these we're gonna move all of them up we're gonna do these again and basically just layer them up let me bring this down so that i can see all of them i'm gonna select all of these and i'm gonna press ctrl d again and i'm gonna set them up to be like one second long since we have all of these uh covering all that area we can actually just deactivate that and we have them like that so that they don't bother us and if we go back to the main timeline we can see now that we have the clone staying there now there's one cool thing that you can do here you can leave these behind so that a little trail is gonna show up on top of him but if we move these up which is the one that had the magic mask then we can see them stay behind and then everything comes out like that now that we have that pre-built basically we're gonna right click and we're gonna open this infusion we're gonna create a tracker for these but first we're gonna add another media i'm gonna connect these here just for now and I want this media to be actually the background. That means we're gonna see our main clip. That way we can set up the tracker here and we don't have to go into the other one to create the tracker and then copy that and bring it here. So we're gonna create a simple tracker right here and we're gonna move these right to this section because this clip is not gonna have a lot of camera movement. It's gonna be really easy to track, but I wanna leave the tracker a little bit to the side so that when he lands in here, it doesn't affect the tracker. So we're gonna track it all. Then we're gonna grab this tracker. You can probably get rid of this section, but if you wanna know how it looks, we're gonna put it there. And we're gonna go to the operation and we're gonna first of all match, move and see how that looks. Moving a little bit, I think, so it's not really working, I guess. So what we can do in this case is we're gonna create a background here and we're gonna bring these as an alpha. Then we're gonna connect this here. We're gonna press Ctrl T and it's gonna be match move again, but then foreground over background. Okay, now that looks good. If we look at it again, looks a little bit good, but they last a little bit too long, right? So we want these them to all disappear right after he lands. So the last one is created right here. So maybe right here, we're going to create a marker. And it's good to know, um, you might have to do it by memory, I guess, a little bit. Or if you're at the beginning of your timeline right here, it's going to be easier to identify right here. Like we have Spider-Man right here because it's going to start at zero. Then you know exactly if it's two seconds or how many seconds it is. We're going to right click, open this in timeline, and we're going to have to find whatever that still is. To find it more easily, you can actually just uh, press D on all of these and we're going to activate all of these again so that we know exactly where that frame was, which I guess is this one right here. So we can actually set up a timeline marker right here. So we know that way it's going to end right here. And that means that we're going to have to shorten all of these a little bit so that they all end right at that point, right? Whoop. If you want them, you can actually make this start a little bit longer, right? Uh, stay a little bit longer. So we're going to do these. We're going to go three seconds here, go one second, one frame, one again, again that way they all just disappear and come back to the main person at right a little bit faster than they appear okay now there's a cool effect here that i think came out on 18.5 which is the paper effect which looks pretty cool in my opinion we're gonna be using that paper edge i'm not sure if this is only in on studio but i think it might be in free too so we're pretty good on that end so here you can modify these and we're going to actually just copy these and then select all of the other ones and press Alt V and then paste the fusion effect. Now all of them are going to have the paper uh, background or edge. And here you can modify them individually so that they're, they are all a little bit different from each other so that they, they look a little bit more unique, right? This is really up to you. If you want them all to be the same, then that's cool too. But that's basically what you have to do so that the paper looks cool another last thing that you can do is add a little bit of a camera shake so we're gonna go to the open effects section and add a camera shake and we're gonna go to open effects here and here what you want to do is adjust them so that the shaking is a little bit less than what it's doing right now right it's really up to you so you have to experiment here with a different tilt amplitude and speed and rotation also the scale of the movement and once you're happy with it what you can do is just 
copy these and then modify them individually on the other trails here. In this case, we're going to go instead of fusion, make sure to deselect that. Otherwise, it's going to paste all those changes that you've already added right back onto them and replace them. And they're going to look all the same again. Here, we can actually do the same process again. And we'll be just adjusting these a little bit. And basically, if you want to randomize the speed, it will probably be enough. And also a little bit of the scale right here. Now, the only thing that's a little bit bugged out sometimes so that you have to click and move the ball right here for some reason. If I want to move them like that, it just gets stuck. So I'm not sure why that happens. But yeah, that's basically how you would do it. And then the last thing that you can do if you want to add a little bit of an extra touch here is we're going to go and I actually added a transition, which was, I think, a glow transition here. And if it's not, if it is, if it doesn't let you add these on the last one, what we can do is make these bigger. And then we can bring these down like that. You can set this up in the middle or to the side. And that's going to make it last a little bit longer, right? actually want this side to be right there on the edge and then bring that back there and we have that little glow effect and you can modify these and adjust these however you want then we're going to go back to our timeline and check it out after you have that ready your your edit is basically done and the last step would be add, adding other elements which then you can do so right here under it or you can also go to your timeline right here again and we're going to texturize these or add other elements or like change the color of it. If you want to modify these individually, you can texturize it inside Fusion. Open this in Fusion, for example, and we're going to add a um, gradient, so a background, and we're actually going to change this to screen and then we're going to set it up as a gradient maybe a radial gradient I want it to be a different color there and then we're going to max this out like that now that one is going to look a little bit crazy so if we look them all like that then it will have a different color and you can use that same process to modify all of them and make them more unique and you can even project like another video on top of that. All you will have to do is instead of using that background node right here, you will just insert a video clip that has some sort of texture and then you're pretty set. You can add an adjustment layer under these and then on that adjustment layer, add any other elements, crazy elements like a painting that if you want to do that, for example, like if you want to add a painting, let me just show you, right? Why not? Right? So we're going to go to the effect section, add an adjustment layer because that's going to make it easier than if we were to just directly go into that other clip. So we're going to go to this adjustment layer and we're going to add a uh, paint and we're going to go there. Now, sometimes the paint one is actually working by uh, set duration. So you can stroke duration. So you're going to have to make sure that you do that. Otherwise, if you draw something right here and you move one frame, it's going to just last one frame. So let's say when he lands right here, we want to add a little bit of a cool, interesting effect right here. So like painting effect. So what we can do here is add these lines and they will disappear right away. And let's see like that to move one frame forward. I actually pressed, I don't know what the key is called, but if I show you on this keyboard, it's basically this key right here. But yeah, that's a key that I press to move just one frame forward instead of the arrow keys, because sometimes the arrow keys will adjust whatever is on your viewer, right? But that works too sometimes. So. And then you can actually just modify it and be as creative as you want and add as many things, go crazy with it so that it looks even better every time. And that is how we can create these cool clone trail effects.